What is up guys, Fahan here and welcome back to another Ultimate Review. This is the review of the Ducati Monster 1100. Wow, I don't have my car anymore. I've got my Ducati, thanks to you. Ducati. Huge thanks to Unique Bike Rental for loaning me this bike. They have a whole range of unique bikes for rental, from BMWs to Ducatis. Um, to even Adiva, there's even Adiva and also uh, Gidara Fuko. Now, also as I've complained just now in city streets, um, it doesn't do too well, the monster. This bike doesn't like to be tamed. It just wants to go fast and I find myself holding on to the clutch or half clutch very often because to manage the bike, to slow the bike down but then it just doesn't like to be tamed but I have to say that oh man, we're getting up to speed it's pretty awesome sir. <laughs> oh man, I'm loving it Whew. oh my gosh the torque on this is very awesome. It's one of the more torqueier bikes that I've ever ridden. And it sounds really bitchin, you know, when you're riding it on going up to speed. Oh man. Oh my god. At high speeds, the bike does really well. <laughs> But given that there's no windshield in front of you, you're feeling the full force of the wind. So I guess riders would like to ride like this. <laughs> but damn man, oh my god, on at high speeds on the highway, the monster really does well. Handles like a dream on the highway, you know? Oh man. Gosh, I wish we can bring this to Malaysia. I'm gonna enjoy this bike in Malaysia, man. And of course, we're exiting the highway, so we have to slow down. Oh, man. It's a bike that doesn't want to go slow. I, I, can, I can tell you that. Lah. Oh, man. I feel as if when you're slowing down, <laughs> the bike is like going to stall or something. <laughs> I think the new Ducatis will have the riding tech to manage itself at slow speeds so you can ride it comfortably at low speeds but basically for this Ducati it doesn't want to go slow but the monster right here it really does love the highways so I think after we pump our fuel eh, we're gonna go back into the highway <laughs> the handling wise I think it's pretty good okay turns and leans wherever you point the bike to Cornering is a breeze on the bike, you know. I think um, you can even go lower and corner barring if you want to, but of course we're not gonna do that lah. Uh, because it's not my bike. Lah. <laughs> I don't want to do anything too crazy on other people's bikes and also um, in Singapore lah. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm gonna make our way to this Caltex here and pump some fuel. Yeah. Okay, it's been a while since I pumped Singapore fuel, uh, so <laughs> I don't know how crazy the prices are going to be. Side stand, having trouble putting it down. <sighs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Okay, so it's been a while. Hopefully, the prices are not too crazy. I'm just gonna pump half tank, given that they give me a uh, bike that only left like I don't know I think 3 bars 1.2 liters is already 413 so not that bad lah the Ducati Monster 1100 was manufactured from 2009 till 2013 the first major update after 15 years to the Monster lineup the Monster was touted by the media as the bike that saved Ducati with over 300,000 made in December 2016 the Monster 1100 was replaced by the Monster 1200 in late 2013. At the time of its release, the Monster appealed to the urban, style-conscious buyers who wanted a bike that could make an individualistic statement and it did so with a motorcycle that they had not quite seen before for a Ducati. 
despite the huge departure from other Ducati models, it was still unmistakably Italian and a Ducati. Engine is a 1078cc, air-cooled, four-stroke, two desmodromic valves, 90-degree L-twin cylinder, with electronic fuel injection and a six-speed manual transmission. So it's always in the reviews, so we're gonna start off with the riding position. Okay, so sitting on this bike right now, um, it's, it's typical sports bike sitting position. So um, very aggressive, leaning forward quite a bit. Your legs are falling quite a bit. And my full weight of my body is on um, the my palms right now. So one way to counter this is to actually use your body and grip the tank tightly. Lah. Um, for me, not too keen in this sitting position, given that I'm so used to riding a, a adventure bike, but you get used to it. Lah. So the right height is 81 cm, I'm 165. As you can see, I'm tattooing slightly on the Ducati Monster. And with a weight of 169 kg, I think like you're in a stoplight or standing on a bike like this, uh, vertically challenged riders won't have any issues with it. Lah. So up next, we're going to talk about the design. Lah. Very much this um, hyper-naked kind of design, okay? very much stripped down of unnecessary body cladding. Ducati says that it's to help with the weight reduction, also to help give off that naked look is the trellis frame uh, fully exposed. Um, this is a Ducati signature. However, Ducati itself decided to do away with the trellis frame starting with the 2021 models. And Ducati enthusiasts aren't really happy about that. <laughs> and also to add on single-sided swing arm with chain on the right side, which, wow, I must admit that it's really amazing that they managed to pull this off. Um, dual exhaust gives a nice symmetrical look to the bike. Um, other than that, I think it's pretty much a very attractive design and two giant inverted front forks and also dual disc brakes at the front gives a very distinctive look to the bike. Yeah, the design overall, I think it screams um, Ducati, really has a nice appealing design to it. Lah. Right, so we're going to talk about the handlebar controls on the Ducati Monster, okay? Um, given that this is an old model, very much basic and straightforward, there's like no riding modes, no riding features to toggle with. Okay, to the left over here, you've got the high beam, low beam, signal indicators, horn. And strangely enough, there's a mode toggle here, but I don't think it does anything. Um, when I ride the bike, uh, I try to toggle around with it. There's no increase or decrease in performance or speed. Okay, so to the right over here, we have the kill switch, the starter, and uh, that's it. <laughs> and so the gauge cluster is this um, LCD uh, display, okay, very much in line with the bikes in those era. Apparently the mode button is to toggle the LCD display. Um, I think it's very much simple and straightforward, okay. You got the speedometer, tachometer, a fuel indicator, and minimal LED warning lights. Okay, the signal indicators once again shows a generic one. I think it's basically in line with all the bikes in those era. <laughs> Basically, that's it. Simple and straightforward. Nothing much to say. Okay, and speaking of riding tech, okay, so once again, I've mentioned um, not much riding tech considering the era it was launched. Okay, 43mm fully adjustable forward shocks in the front, full LCD gauge cluster, single-sided string arm, Brembo brakes, no riding modes, no traction control, no ABS for this model. However, the EVO variation has all of this uh, and was launched in 2011. So, horn check for the Ducati Monster. <laughs> Not bad sounding horn, I must say. And of course, as with uh, the Ducati, um, you got to hear the sound of the dry clutch, which is mwah, bellissimo. Delicioso! <laughs> I don't know, I'm like, just spouting some Italian words. So let's talk price. And given that Ducatis are a rare breed of motorcycles, especially for the Monster and this model, uh, there's actually none for sale that I can find in SG Bike Mart, Carousel. However, an EVO model is being sold, um, listed as $20,999.99. So I had to stop halfway just now because 
um, it had been raining <laughs> and we're halfway to our expressway uh, ride so just gonna give you guys my feedback you know um, in, riding, in riding it in the expressway and give you guys my feedback on how the monster does you know right so on the highway i have to say that i'm really loving the monster on the highway because it's very smooth of a ride and it handles beautifully on the highway maintains speed very well it's such a smooth and stable riding experience on the highway yeah I cannot get enough of the <laughs> highway riding actually all right you know, as you're riding up to speed like this actually there's no issue lah um, only when you are about to slow down or when you are going at slow speed stop stop situation that's when the bike doesn't want to be tamed but in splitting no issue given the small size of the bike but we're just gonna get out of here <laughs> seriously at 35 kilometers per hour the bike just feels like it's gonna stall and i also noticed that while riding i'll never i'll never go above fourth gear <laughs> so the ducati monster is certainly meant for high speed uh riding lah. like if you're in the highway um with gradual bends you know like the autobahn for example the monster is going to be a perfect bike for you because at high speeds the bike the monster just cruises very gracefully like it's a very graceful ride and the handling is pretty awesome coupled with this bike's awesome performance on the highway and the high speeds this is definitely gonna be an awesome tour lah. And yeah, I would I would take it out at you know the second link highway at Gelang Pata for a quick night ride down the Malaysian highway, you know. <laughs> I can see myself like going 110, 120 with the Ducati Monster effortlessly man. This bike really loves to go fast. I'm gonna try to go to the fourth lane. Loving it man, I'm really loving it. <laughs> and the Ducati Monster strives to be that naked bike with sports bike characteristics. I mean British media touted this bike as the bike that saved Ducati. And it was very popular back in his heyday. I mean 400,000 sold as of 2016 is a really a uh, huge feat for a motorcycle eh? and development costs were cheap for the monster using existing um, platforms and engines which appeals to the urban youth <laughs> and here in Singapore also it's one of the more common Ducati bikes here and I've seen my fair share of Ducati monsters on the road especially when they're tailgating behind you at the, fourth, at the first lane <laughs> Because these bikes don't really like to be slowed down They don't really like to be tamed It just wants to unleash itself on the highways And it's a really awesome dry riding experience on the highway it's, it's just that smooth of a ride on the highway And as you're going through this gradient bend right here The Ducati Monster really oh, I, I cannot describe the performance on this when you're on the highway and going through a bend, you know, it's 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 handling is really perfect lah. Never have I ever experienced this on any other motorcycle before. Maybe with a Ducati sports bike, I don't know. <laughs> but the handling damn man, you really cannot go wrong with it on the highway. Eh? It's drizzling a bit. <laughs> I mean it's been raining the whole day. And I've tried my best, my very best to do to finish this review by today, eh? because I need to return the bike later. And I'm gonna end my riding review for now. So do stay tuned for my uh, thoughts and opinions on the bike. And we'll see you in a bit. So raining the whole day today, which is why I'm shooting indoors. And some of the shots, as you can see in the video, 
I shot here because <laughs> so I had like two days with the bike and from what I can see that the Ducati Monster strives to be that sporty naked motorcycle to appeal to the urban commuter when it was released at the time okay so very much typical sports bike riding posture um, something that non sports bike riders such as myself need to get accustomed to <laughs> doesn't do too well on city streets um, feels like you're gonna stall the bike every time you're moving off or in first gear maybe i need to rev the bike more but but however there's no problem or no issues with high riding uh, great performance on the highway very smooth and stable handles like a dream this bike is really at home at the highway great handling negotiates corners and bends like a dream um, probably the best ever handling bike that i've ever ridden hands down seriously in my personal opinion is probably a good spare bike for those weekend highway rides Again, definitely not a bike for everyone. For riders wanting a naked bike with sports bike characteristics. Um, for riders who prefer looks over functionality. Okay, so it comes with downsides. Um, very high fuel consumption. Eh? So uh, whole day of riding this bike today and already uh, almost out of fuel. <laughs> so after this, we're going to top it up. And uh, yeah, as with a Ducati, it's expensive to own and maintain. And not all bike shops will even dare to touch it and yes clearly as a ducati you know it's more of a status symbol with the likes of luxury cars lah. but i have to say that riding this bike is a very fun bike to ride um definitely when you're driving it all of the riders and people around you will be looking at it you know <laughs> it really says something about the brand the image of ducati and everybody wants one and that really says something about um, the brand and image of Ducati so once again huge thanks to Unique Bike Rental for loaning me this bike for the review they have a whole range of unique bikes for rental from BMWs to Ducatis um, to even Adiva there's even Adiva and also uh, Gidara Fuko and <laughs> do check out the social media pages for their bike availability try out some of these unique bikes lah, at least once in your life lah. <laughs> and that's it for the vlog and we will see you in the next one anyway guys if you think the review is not up to my usual standards it's understandable lah, because um, it's been raining the whole day and um, feel pretty much sien lah, to record these videos so <laughs> maybe i'm working too hard yeah, maybe I need to take a little break. So maybe after this video, I'm going to take a little break for a while. And yeah, we'll be back stronger and more smangat. <laughs> and thanks for watching once again. And we'll see you in the next one.